Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this powdered explosion text you see here. Basically we have a powdered explosion image here that I got for free on Behance. I'm going to put the link to that in the description. And then I'm using this piece text and this is a free font uh, called Nexa Bold and I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the description as well. This tutorial uses some custom brushes and I have a tutorial on how to install brushes in GIMP on my website so I'll include a link to that as well of course. Before we get started here I just want to show you guys my website and you can go to daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials or gimpschool.com and that'll take you to our tutorials page here and we have tons of video and text tutorials and you can also visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design or go to our Udemy online course at uh, udemy.com slash gimp dash photo dash editing. I'll include that link as well in the description. Um, so here is that link I told you about where you can get the um, powder explosion photos on Behance and if you click download here that'll download the powder explosion brushes and again uh, there's a link in the description to the tutorial on how to install brushes in GIMP. So we'll go ahead and minimize that and I'm going to start by opening up our uh, powder explosion image here and to do that I'll go to file open and then I'm going to find, here is where I downloaded uh, my powder explosion image. And you can click on here to generate a preview if the preview is not already there by default. And click open. And by the way, today I'm using the newest version of GIMP, GIMP 2.9.8. Although there's nothing really in this tutorial today that I'll be using that you can't do in GIMP 2.8.22. But if you do want to download the latest version of GIMP, I will include a link to the GIMP development version as this is called. This is essentially going to be what GIMP 2.10 is going to be, except there's some bug fixes they have to work out. But I found this version is pretty stable. So anyway, we'll go ahead and I'm going to crop my image here. And uh, this is optional for you guys. You might want to just use this as is. But I'll grab my crop tool in the toolbox here and click and drag. And then I can drag the edges here of the crop to adjust. And then I'll double click and that'll apply the crop. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my text tool and I already have my Nexa bold font selected here but uh, if you don't have that selected go ahead and click on your fonts and choose the font you want to use and I'll go ahead and click on my composition and I'm just going to type the words piece like I did in my other versions here and I'm going to highlight that text and you can increase or decrease the font if you're not happy with this font size and you can also increase the kerning here, which I'm going to do. And I'll just increase this to 10. And that basically increases the spacing between the letters. And then I'll grab my Align tool and click on that text. And then Align to Center of Target, Align Middle of Target. And that's just going to align my text here to the middle of the image. I'll grab my Zoom tool by clicking on it here. Or I can just hit Z on my keyboard. And we'll zoom in. And now what we want to do is we want to be able to uh, paint using the brushes that we just downloaded. And again, I'll put that link in the description. And we're going to paint over our text here so that it looks like part of the powder is coming through the text or like coming over it. Uh, so in other words, it's almost like you just threw this piece text onto this powder and now the powder is coming up around that text. And so the key to doing that is you want to add a layer mask because that is what we call non-destructive editing. And that's going to allow you to paint away the lettering here without actually erasing these letters. So if you make a mistake, you can always paint it back. And so to do that, I'm going to click on my piece text layer here. Right click and go to add layer mask. And under initialize layer mask 2, I'm going to make sure white full opacity is selected and click add. And now we have a layer mask here that we can paint on instead of having to erase the letters here. And so now what I'm going to do is grab my brushes that I downloaded. And I'm going to make sure that I flip my foreground over to black here. And if you don't have black selected, just click on the color and drag it to the bottom left corner or really any bottom corner. Click OK. And now um, after you install your brushes, they'll be over here and you're looking for the powder explosion kit brushes and these are Photoshop brushes so they're ABR file types um, but when you click on them it'll say powder explosion kit here and so that's how you know you're on the right brush 
And by default, these brushes are probably going to be huge, or they might be huge in uh, GIMP. And so you'll have to come over here and crank the size down. And before we start painting on here, I want to be able to see the powder below this layer so I know which powder to paint over. And so to do that, I'm going to click on my text layer and then just decrease the opacity here until I can pretty easily see the powder behind here. And that's going to reveal where I want to paint. And so the next trick now, you want to be able to size your brush like we just did so that it aligns pretty well with the powder here so that they look pretty similar. But you want to also make sure that the angle is right here. So I can adjust the angle of my brush by just dragging this angle slider here. And so now you can see it's starting to look a little bit more similar to the angle of this powder. And then whenever you're ready, make sure to click on the layer mask and not your text layer. And go ahead and paint that black over the parts you want to essentially erase. And you can resize your brush using the left and right brackets on your keyboard. Or you can, of course, drag the size bar over here. And you just want to go around and paint over anything you want erased. Now you're going to have to periodically change your brush because the powder isn't going to be the same. It's not going to be uniform throughout this image. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll actually grab my zoom tool here and zoom in so I can get a better look at uh, some of this powder here. And then grab a brush that's similar to an area that you want to, again, paint over with the layer mask. Make sure you're on your brush tool and I'll go ahead and decrease the size of this brush and paint here. And I'll change the angle. And it's not going to be perfect the first time around so basically you're going to paint various parts of this image here and um, what we're going to do is after we've painted a decent amount we're going to show the full opacity and see if there's parts that we can improve on and uh, then we'll go ahead and make those adjustments. But essentially you want to find the prominent areas of powder like right here where you can see that it's definitely sticking out a little bit. It's, it's jutting out of the image so it's coming more towards the camera. And the reason you want to do that is that it creates more of a 3D effect when uh, you paint over the parts that are popping out. So this brush is huge again so I'm going to go ahead and decrease the size and I'll keep decreasing that. And there's not really a formula for doing this. You're just kind of eyeing it and uh, painting over the parts that you think will look cool overlapping your text. So I'll go ahead and change my brush here because I'm going to paint some of this. And again, it's huge, so I'm going to decrease the size. And I don't want to decrease it too much. And what I found is that the more you paint away from the letters and the more dynamic the um, brushes that you use, you know, the, the more you switch up the brushes you use, the, the number of different brushes you use, the more dynamic your composition is going to look overall and the better it's going to look. But you definitely don't want to overdo it because you still want to be able to read what the letters say. So there's definitely a balance. And something I like to do is I'll choose a brush and then I'll kind of move the brush around the image to see if there are any shapes on the image that kind of match the brush I just chose. And so in this case we've got some parts of the P here, uh, little specks that uh, this brush can paint over. And I'm just adjusting the angle of the brush here. Alright, so now I'm going to grab my zoom tool, hold the control key to zoom out. And I'm just going to zoom out on my image here and I'm going to bring the opacity back up just to check on the progress of the image. And this looks pretty good to me. But what I can do is I can zoom back in here and I can even click and drag on some parts here and just kind of double check that none of this looks too fake or too cheesy. And if it does, you can grab your brush and 
control Z, make sure that you are on your layer mask and then switch over to white and you can paint some of this back, anything that maybe looks like it's a bit too much. And then I can switch back over to black, increase my size and if there's any part that maybe you just want to add a little bit of grunginess, you can kind of just brush against some of the letters here without applying too much of the paintbrush. That way it just looks a little bit grittier. And you can again switch your brush and just kind of vary it up a little bit. And that's a little too much, so I'm going to control Z. All right, so now I'm going to grab my zoom tool and zoom out again. And there we go. So that's a pretty simple tutorial, but it's got a really cool result. And again, it's probably going to look different every time you do it. As you can see here, I use the same image and the same word, but it does look a little different. Um, and then over here, I used a different image, uh, but the same word and kind of created the same effect. So really cool effect here. It's going to be different each time you do it. It's going to be unique each time you do it, but really creates a nice explosion powder effect that's really eye-catching. So thanks for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. You can of course follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash daviesmediades, on Facebook at daviesmediadesign.com, and you can check out our online photo editing course on Udemy. And of course, I'll include all the links from this tutorial in the description. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.